Rare Earth Elements are one of the small pockets of the ASX that are consistently pushing higher and have been doing for the last few months. They are leading the market along with other battery minerals on the ASX. We're going to jump in and have a look at the top six Rare Earth miners on the ASX to see how they performed over the last month, the trading patterns that they've created and the correlations or consistency that this group has together as this theme pushes higher and higher. We've seen this before with uranium lithium companies that we've looked at last week and also pulled out volatility contraction patterns and similar charting or technical patterns that show up before they break out. And that's what we're also surfacing through the momentum companies and the high velocity companies that we bring forward on Fridays and Saturdays to surface these congestion patterns that we're seeing on screen like we've seen with LYC. We want to see them and identify these companies that are congesting not only as the share themselves, the one company, but as the group, the other group of rare earth elements that are moving together. Because when we see these congestion patterns all happening in a group with high correlation, that's where we do see these breakouts running and pushing like we've seen with rare earth elements this week. We've also seen it with lithium and uranium companies. You can have a look at those in the other shares in play videos. But right now, we're going to jump in and have a look at the sixth best performer this week. It's ILU. If you've been trading rare earth elements, you've definitely looked at ILUCA resources, along with many of the other ones we've picked up on this list. We've got the daily chart on the left-hand side. Each bar, each candle is one day. And then we've got the moving averages to help set this frame. 200-day moving average is that red line. The green line is the 50-day. And this blue line is a 10-day moving average to help time those entries. What we can see is consistently moving higher with the 200 day moving average and coming down into that 200 day and just getting under it before turning the corner consolidating and starting that recent rally now what we look for here is a spring so if you haven't learned a wyckoff spring it's a definitely a charting pattern to look into in detail because it's really really useful for a movement like this you've got a low here a second touch to the low and then undercutting the low you want to be really really focusing on the volumes for the days that it comes under and the strength of the days it follows like we see with these two strong candles coming out of the lows. This shows the inability to stay under that 200 day moving average, inability to stay lower and clearly that's been the turning point before this movement. So moving from under $8.50 on the red line 200 day moving average to get up to $10.50 in a space of about five, six weeks, that's a good strong run for our Luca. It's got them at sixth place. 10% for the month, 14% for the quarter. And we're going to bring this in a little bit so you can see the yearly performances too. 45% for the year, as we can see on that chart. Decent sized market capitalization for our Luca. So it's good to see a 45% gain on a decent sized company. When we move on up to fifth place, we're going to have a look at PTR. These are companies that we surfaced before in the rare earth elements, but you can see it's dropped notably over that period. It hasn't had that same correlation. It hasn't had that same movement, but massive swings in these small share price movements. What can happen and what we've seen previously with these companies that do have large leverage, huge leverage to what's been happening with the share price movements is that when they do see the thematic come on play, like we have seen with PTR in the past, you can get a massive and a huge explosive percentage rise movement happening in a short period of time, looking at these couple of months here. So when that tide does turn and there's a commodity in favor, we can see these small caps really shoot the lights out. We're going to move on up to Arafura ARU. If you've been trading the markets on, in Australian market miners, you will see that it's been a massively, hugely volatile company and put on huge trading opportunities. Jumping into the last year, you can see it's had its range between sort of nine cents and 30 cents, but spent most of the year drifting down, getting under that average, that red line, that moving average of 200 days. As it's rounding out this base, we do see some decent volume spikes coming in here, but then volume dries up before it starts to turn the corner and put on some strong green candles on the up days. Starting to break out 15 cents, comes up, up to the 50 day, 200 day moving average. We do find quite often after it's spent a bit of time under the 200 day, the first time it gets over as a miner, it's less likely to maintain it. Comes back, tests that 50 day moving average, turns around, you can see a mini spring in here, good strong volume on that turnaround and then shoots back up to 24 cents. Congestion, what we're looking at there is not quite a high and tight flag because that rally isn't quite 100%, but it could be considered that way coming into the congestion. We do see a Gilmorales and Chris Karcher, what they call a pocket pivot on this day, which is also a viable gap up. 
you can learn more about that. We've created a video to drill down in that more detail and how to trade it, how to use it, those guidelines. That led you to the flick up, it did come down, tried to get under that 200 day moving average, but that inability, you see four prongs down here where the share price was unable to be under that 200 day moving average and that's turned the corner and put on that return that we do see for the last month, 12.68%. That's got them ranked number four for this month. We move on up to number three, we're gonna see IXR. And guess what that company does? Iconic Rare Earths. 12% for the week, 16% for the month, 42% for the quarter and 77% for the year. We're gonna see that as we zoom out. And coming up, moving from where it was in January, we did see that sort of percentage movement happen just in a matter of two or three months because that's when Rare Earth shot up and IXR was running. You may recall a video that we did put forward at the time where Iconic Rare Earth was the top performer in the space. Six cents belted back down to 2.5. That 200 day moving average again, pushed under. Doesn't, doesn't have a lot of volume down here, sort of exhaustive volume in that one drop there and then no follow through sort of being accumulated here on the up next side up. Then we do see a good strong candle or a bar we should say for the accumulation and then breaking back over it. Then we see it moving in a wave formation, two steps forward, one step back, and then that's continuing on the 200 day moving average. Before consolidating sideways with this overhead resistance, but a higher, if you can call that a cup and handle, it's quite tight, small, but then does break back out, tries to retest it in December as we're losing volume and market participants coming into Christmas. Does not get down to the 200 day moving average, breaches this 50 day. Remember the green lines are 50 day, turns the corner quite quickly along with some other rare earths that we're seeing right now, and then runs up to where it has been trading most recently. So that's an iconic putting on 16% for the month, 77% for the year. You can see that down that drop off in 42% over the quarter. That's iconic rare earths being in that third position. Linus, L-Y-C, trading rare earths, you're looking at Linus. This tends to be the proxy, the main one. It's like Newcrest can be on the Australian market when trading gold miners. BHP for miners in general, and Commonwealth Bank for the banks. When we're looking at rare earth, we really do look at Linus as that lead. What's really interesting here is what we've got on chart is a volatility contraction pattern. We zoom out a bit more, you're gonna see it churning sideways. We have a VCP happening here, rounding out a base, sort of five, six contractions as it's coming into an apex as well. So we'll zoom in for that one here. We've got this as a VCP just coming down and contracting. Each time it drops, it drops quickly and then climbs up slowly. And that tends to show that it's in downward movement, still happening the same thing, spending a lot of downward movement on the thrust, then recovering a little bit. This 50 day moving average once breached hasn't has become overhead resistance. But with that overhead resistance, we're seeing that coming up and rallying. And then each contraction, each pullback is getting smaller and tighter until the point we have higher lows happening. This is where we're coming into an apex. If you want to draw a triangle, whatever you want to call it, this is volatility contraction pattern. You can click on the link on screen or there's one below where it goes to a download. That's going to explain more about this volatility contraction pattern. We move on through, we do see as it's rounding that base, it's breaking out of this apex, not huge spurts in volume, but as it starts to uptick here, break this overhead resistance on that buy will gap up. We see some reasonable volume here. If we take out these dramatic and climactic pushes down here, we're going to see the context of that movement. There you go, you're going to see this. The reasonable size above average candle pushing it up. It does throw back quickly, comes into that breakout region or the overhead resistance for support, and then turns the corner and continues to climb. And we're going to see it climb again into another VCP. One contraction. First contraction, second contraction, we're looking at the lows coming to be less of a carve out, less of a drop each time. Then we're gonna come into another contraction, much smaller. So we've got one contraction, second contraction, third, where this creates the fourth one. You're gonna see the good strong volume here, decent candle, solid candle, above that overhead resistance, what Gary Glover calls the B wave right here, that recent swing high, and then away it goes. That's why we're looking for VCPs, because when we see them happen as a group, we do see that huge consistency. So we're seeing high correlation in VCPs and other constituents in the group. When they break out, they start to lead each other and it's not the same day. It can be spread over two months as we saw with lithium miners in the June, May, June, July period, starting with Liontown Resources. 
So LYC, we see two volatility contraction patterns in the last year, and that's the last one that's got them moving from 750 up to where they are now on $11. LYC, 18% for the month, 87% for the year. And we move on over to PLS, Pilbara Mining, known for its lithium as well, but it does have tantalum and rare earths in there too. So tantalum, lithiums, they are other aspects on the Pilbara side of things. We're going to bring this chart to the left-hand side for PLS. 8.9% for the week, 29% for the month, 57% over the quarter, 116% for the year. Not only is it the best performer for the month, it is the best performer out of this group for the year. Same movement that we're looking for here. We're seeing this VCP. So we'll try bring this out to two years to get a bit more context on how this moves. We're going to see there's a VCP much earlier, but we're going to drag out to have a look at this rally and then see the VCP. So whether you can call that a cup and handle, that's up to you to draw that, but it is a VCP, one contraction, second contraction, third, and then breaking out that overhead resistance before kicking on into the next congestion. Rally's on up, one contraction, bigger one here. There, there we go. So we've got these, this channel, whether you're calling this a basing pattern of formation, we're seeing this overhead resistance be a bit elastic, but getting tested a lot up here and real volume. So we're seeing absorption lines here, really, really trying to thrust through it, but being sold down into it. What they're unable to do is really push back down. So we see as it's breaking this overhead resistance on a lot of volume, it's trying to break out a lot of volume, trying to push through really volatile times, 240, 260, whipping between one, two days. And then as it breaks and cracks, it really starts that rally that we've seen right now, late 2021, December, coming into January 2022. Massive movement, 270, 360 in a matter of about two weeks. Huge push for PLS. That's how we've seen that put on 29% for the month. They are exposed to rare earth elements, not the only iron in their fire, not the only tenement that they are pushing, but that does have them exposed. When we want to do this, we're going to have a look at these minerals in the context of other battery minerals, because understanding the battery minerals helps understand the demand, the flow on international markets. For the month, cobalt's really moved. Lithium, 29%. We looked at that last week, and we do see how that's played out for the Australian lithium miners. Doesn't trade as much as iron ore or even copper or gold for that matter. That's why the moving averages really help us to understand how that, shit, how that commodity price has moved. That's lithium's movement and has surged on higher. Nickel put on 4.9%. We're going to have a look at some of those miners later in the week on the ASX. We've got tin 1%. Graphite has been some of the bigger movers. This is not the commodity itself, but there are, there are graphite miners on the ASX that have performed well. Again, we looked at that last week. Then we also have, we've got copper. That is a bit of a proxy for how the metals and the market demand is moving. And that has been sort of stable and flat line. So as we're seeing these spurts in rare earth elements, we've got some of the smaller commodities like tantalum that aren't traded as freely on the international markets. So when we're looking at commodity markets, you're not seeing it listed here. We've got platinum, palladium, gold, got crude oil, brand, wheat futures when we get into the soft commodities. You've also got iron ore and coal. But we don't see the tantalum and the smaller rare earth elements. But we do see them come through on the share prices that we've seen this week and this month. And that's why we can see we're surfacing these because it is a thematic that we can trade and see that consistency in these leaders. When they're breaking out together and putting good runs on the board, we do see that flow through to better performances there on after.